Um, okay, so before we go on to our super special guest, I wanted to share something. Um, I know many of you guys have read this book, The Five Levels of Leadership, or you guys might be in the middle of reading it. We are doing this um, on my team for my senior goals and above for our book study. And uh, we just are finishing up the level two leader, the permissional leader, and we're advancing now to level three. But as we move into this topic that Christina is going to talk on, this has been just sitting on my heart for a while. So I wanted to share this. Oh, Julian, I'm so glad you guys are reading it too. But uh, one of the things that John Maxwell says here, he says, most of the people who fail to move up into leadership, which remember, if you want exponential growth, the law of the big mo, you have to have leadership and you have to be growing leaders. So if you want that growth, you have to be focusing on leadership. So this is very, very vital. So he says, most of the people who fail to move up into leadership don't make it because they never understand the importance of building re building relationships with the people they work with and gaining their permission to lead. And so I want us to think through that as Christine is gonna talk through some tangible things that she and her team are doing, um, getting people uh, see, to see success in their businesses. Remember, I think, especially as like, as leaders of younger teams, sometimes we see those younger teams really being attached to the systems and the procedures. And this is how I have to do this. This is the dialogue. This is how I need to, to operate. And we kind of forget about we're working with people and it's all about relationships. It's all about cultivating relationships, building that trust, building that influence and not viewing people as opportunities and treating them like people. And so if you have this book, go, not right now, but make a little note of it, go to page 126 through 129. He has a guide. He has 10 points as a guide of shifting from level two to level three. And I just want to share, thank you, Jordan. I just wanted to share three challenges that he gives out of these 10. I would love for you guys to write down, store these in the back of your mind and be thinking through them as Christina is talking through uh, what she's going to discuss today. But one of the challenges he says, is to express value for each person on your team, um, coming up with positive things that you can honestly say about each person on your team, um, and then taking the time to tell them what, at least one positive thing about them. The next thing, one of the most important ones, I think, is making fun a goal, um, because this can be a really hard business, and so we got to have fun. we got to loosen up, because if we're not loosened, we are like a robot, and that's not fun. Um, so he talks about how one of the best ways for goal-oriented individuals to develop a more people-oriented style of leadership is to try to make the workplace more fun. I know that's something that Jordan Roddenberry is very passionate about. Um, and then the third thing that I wanted to highlight is become your team's encourager in chief. It says for the next two weeks, say something encouraging to someone on your team every day. So store those in the back of your head as a leader on this team, on your teams, you are the creator of your culture. Make it fun, make it about other people, be the chief encourager and encourage your team to encourage other people. Okay, we're gonna pass it off to Christina. We all love, adore, respect Christina. Um, she brings the heat with such passion and such truth. And I think all of us are in alignment with every single thing that she says. So get your pen, your paper. I am recording this, but if you have rubies that are not on the call right now, make sure you go and holler at them and say, jump on right now. If you guys have questions, put them in the chat. Christina may or may not be able to answer them. If she doesn't have a chance to, then uh, one of us can get in touch with her and ask her these questions. And I'm sure she'd be willing to follow up. Okay, Christina, thank you for Oh, I got a okay. chance to, girl. I will answer those questions. Don't you worry. Um, it is a half day for my kids. So listen, I like that all of y'all have so many humans in your arms right now because I got a whole lot of them and they're, you know, doing their thing. So we'll see how this goes. I bribed them with ch Publix chicken tenders. So, um, okay. Well, first of all, when you said get out your book and go to page 126, I'm over here like a good student. Like, okay, yeah, yes, ma'am. <laughs> listen, that's a great book. I just took our team through it last year. Um, something based off of what you just said right there is y'all I'm not naturally um a <laughs> sounds terrible I'm not naturally a thoughtful person um I wish that I was and I love people who are so when she says like say something thoughtful about someone on your team every day um 
I have alarms on my phone. I'm not kidding. I have an alarm in my phone. Um, I also have people on my team that need that connection. That's not business focused. So I also have alarms set monthly for that. Like, Hey, call and talk to Terry about not business stuff. And it's so funny because I'll call and we'll be connected and Terry will be like, Christina, was this your alarm? Like they think it's so endearing. Like they know it's not normal for me, like that I have to slow. It's just not, it's just not a, not me, but I, but they see me make the effort. And so your team will appreciate the effort. So just do something like that. How you can make this fun guys end of the month, instead of just working until midnight on the 28th of the month, this month, make it fun. What if you guys have sushi at 10 PM? Like everybody have a sushi, they can pull out and y'all have sushi together or pizza delivery night. Like Think of things that you can do cohesively. People love to match. So if you're going to order pizza in for your family on the 28th of the month so that you guys can bust it till midnight, and listen, we work till midnight. Even if I'm not, we ain't gonna, I ain't ranking up. I Listen, I'm where I want to be. You're going to see me on the computer on midnight because I'm showing my team this is what it's about. So think of something fun. I mean, we've shown up before um, pajamas and wine. We've shown up before. Listen, it's real ridiculous at Christmas time. Like we got light up headbands. It's it's really quite the show. Um, so it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Um, so anyway, those are some tips to go off of what Emily just said. But what I want to talk to you about today, um, you, you have the potential to allow it to make you feel one of two things. You have the potential to allow it to make you feel really excited and inspired or overwhelmed. Both are a choice. And I'll go ahead and tell you right now, feel free to choose either one. Uh, if I were you, I would think about choosing the one that is profitable, okay? Um, so first of all, what I want you to do is kind of put your fingers on the pulse of your business right now. Like, where is your the blood? Where's your blood pumping in your business? What's your energy level in your personal business? Like, if I were to come check your, your business's pulse, how many beats per minute am I going to get? Do I have somebody that's vibrant and full of life and like their vitals are off the charts and they're the people in Grey's Anatomy that are like, you know, they're perfectly healthy. Or are you like, do we need to get the paddles, put some, I don't know what that is, like that weird cold gel stuff and then like shock you back to life. Where's your energy level in your business? You don't have to tell me, <clears throat> but just know. <laughs> and just know your, your leaders know, okay? This isn't one you can fake. Like everyone put on your Sunday best, Christina's coming to the call. Um, then I want you to think, when is the last time your pulse was at my level or Joe Rose level or, I mean, wh whoever, whoever you think of when you think about their business, they always just seem to be so energized. When was the last time you felt that energy? Where were you in your business? Recall an, an experience. I think about a time that my um, my energy, my business energy, my pulse was through the roof was when, it was actually the day that this picture was taken. Um, we had just gone out to Arizona to write the new Jewel School curriculum. So there's your motivation to get to Jewel. You get to come hang out with me at Jewel School. Um, but I remember that day standing underneath the mountains and they were taking headshots and it felt completely ridiculous because they're like, put your elbow here, do your hip this way, look back at the camera. And I'm just like, I caught a cramp. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. But I remember thinking, this is the life. This is the life. This is what I work for, where my, my work would have impact. And this feels significant. There's like recognition and I'm going to get to help people. And that was a moment that I remember pausing because I don't pause often and thought, man, that was worth it. Like when I look back over the years and thought that should have been harder than it was. Now for all of the years in, it felt hard. Okay. I know some people look at us and they think we have like pixie dust. I don't know, but there was lots of years of hard. Um, the hardest years in my business were probably where some of you guys are Ruby and senior Ruby. Okay. One thing that some of you don't know about my story is, um, there's never, <laughs> never been a rank that I kept before Sapphire and Diamond. And I probably wouldn't have kept Sapphire except it was back to back. So never, ever a rank. Silver, gold, senior gold, ruby, senior ruby, emerald. Hit emerald and didn't hit it again for a year. Ever. There just never was. And I think what sets me apart from other people with the same circumstance is the fact that I was just willing to embrace the suck. I, I didn't feel threatened by not 
maintaining because that wasn't my final destination. I didn't work the work to get to Emerald. I was okay with having to let it sit there while I, I every rank I had to learn something new, I had to become something different, I had to become something more. Um, and so I just didn't put a whole lot of stock in each particular rank. Did I want to maintain it? Yeah. Did I create a lot of problems for myself that looking back, I would do differently? Also, yeah. But it's kind of like if I'm, I live in Georgia, if I want to go to Disney World, okay. I know exactly how to get to Disney World. Like I'm going to have to get on 75. I'm going to get on the turnpike. It wouldn't matter how many times I had a flat tire, how many times I ran out of gas, how many times I had to turn back because we left something behind. Like at the end of the day, I'm still going to Disney, right? And that's how I, I felt about my whole business. But there was a point in my business it, at Ruby and Senior Ruby. I actually missed y'all Senior Ruby by less than a person, three points three points. And the best part of missing that rank was that we announced to our team that we had hit the rank. So then when we woke up on the, Jordan remembers, when we woke up on the first of the month, um, <laughs> we actually weren't senior Ruby. So that was fun. Um, so there's really nothing that can be happening currently in your business that I have not walked through. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's, it's on you to change the circumstances, but I'm going to give you some stress. Strategies, okay, so we have our pulse back to when we felt alive. Okay, what Brendan Bouchard says in High Performance Habits is if you can recall a time when you felt wildly successful on top of the world, maybe that was going senior gold. Um, for me, senior gold felt like if I can go senior gold, I can go diamond. Like at that point, I knew it wasn't just me, like I had figured out a little bit of duplication, and so whatever that was. He says, if you'll think about what was the success plan that got you there? What were you doing then? What were you believing then? How were you showing up then? What were you not allowing then? Guys, do you know that 80% of distractions are internal and allowed? 80%, which means out of Jordan's whole entire day, only 20% of the distractions are going to be because the baby pukes on her MacBook. Like 80% of the distractions are internal and, and allowed. Meaning you're supposed to be doing new contacts, except for you saw that Instagram notification come up. So we pivoted, we allowed the distraction and we pivoted. Yet at the end of that hour, we thought that we had worked our business, right? So the success plan. Guys, he says, if you'll transpose that success plan, whatever it was that made you feel alive and like put it, remember the old school transparencies where you had to use a, a visa V? That's why I became a teacher because I wanted to use visa Vs and an overhead projector. And then by the time I became a teacher, they had smart boards. So no visa V. Um, but if you were to put the success plan on top of your current circumstance, that would be your solution for changing it. Success principles don't change. Whatever you were doing, thinking, believing, not allowing, putting boundaries in place for, et cetera, the last time that your pulse was where you wanted it to be, if you would just transpose those same behaviors into your circumstance right now, that would be your solution plan. But we overcomplicate things. Somehow we make what used to work. I mean, I had somebody tell me the other day, y'all, y'all, I've been doing this a long time, seven years last week. And she said, I just don't think, I don't think what used to work works anymore. And I said, interesting. Well, here, here are the results I've had personally the last six months doing the same thing I was doing seven years ago. So help me understand how what used to work doesn't work. It's just not true. It's also why when people say, Christina, when are you going to like let up? Like you could just kick back, enjoy the fruit of your labor. And I'm like, no, I got something to prove. I got something to prove. As long as I have my own metrics, as long as I have my own results, can't nobody tell me nothing about nothing not working. It's just not true. What's working is what I'm thinking and believing in the way that I show up in that space. <clears throat> but what's missed sometimes is that people think this persona, this confidence, this boldness, this just natural it must just be how I am. What you don't see is there's another side. There's the side of discomfort. 
There's the side of fear of rejection. There's the side of tired. There's the, there's these sides. I have them. I have to face them just like you do. I went and met with a dream teamer the other day at a coffee shop. She's already very, very successful. And I mean, I had the whole sweaty palms in the parking lot. I'm over there like she already makes more money than I do. And I make a crap ton of it. And she makes more than me. I knew that. Um, so I, I acknowledged the feeling. I allowed myself to be curious about it. And then I allowed myself to consider if there could be another alternative. Here's how I felt intimidated. Maybe like I was lacking something unsure. <clears throat> I allowed myself to feel that. Became curious about it. Then I allowed myself to consider, could there be another perspective? Could the perspective be, she makes more money than I do. She has zero hours to spend it. Now me, I done been on two cruises this month and a trip to New York City. Like I got time and I'd be spending it. So could that be something? Could that be a need I could meet for her? Oh yeah, it could. And I just started running through alternative perspectives. And by the time I got myself out of that car and went in to that building, I'm over here like, she's a fool if she don't do this. She's a fool. Now she's fast start silver in less than like three and a half days because I showed up in that energy. But some people think it's just natural. It's not natural. It's mustard. It's mustard. I think about how I wish I felt when I don't feel it. And then I think, what thoughts can I think to feel it? I refuse, you guys, I'm getting to my strategy in just a second. I refuse to be controlled by emotions that are liars. I refuse to be controlled by, I'm not going, listen, I ain't gonna be controlled by a lot of anything, nothing. I'm married to, to a 250 pound, six foot four man, ain't nobody controlling me, you hear me? Especially emotions, we know they're liars. Yet we let them determine what we will do, what we won't do, how much of it we'll do. When we'll stop, oh, I'm tired. I'm not going to be controlled by that. I'm just going to do what I know is required, regardless of how I feel about it. And that's the difference that sets somebody apart from having great intentions and great actualities, great realities. I always, and this is so hard, it's easy for us to do with other people. You guys know we judge other people based off of their reality, right? We don't judge our kids whether or not they like thought about cleaning their room. Like, did you actually clean your room? That's what I'm looking for. I don't care what you hoped to do. Yet with ourselves, we judge ourselves 100% of the time based off of what we intended to do. Well, I intended to do that. I meant to. I, oh, here's the best one. I would have, except this happened, which, you know, obviously puts us into the victim camp and I also refuse to spend time there. Um, so... What does all of that matter? Here's the thing. I say this all the time. You're exactly where you deserve to be in your business. And for some of you, it's in a very uncomfortable spot. I know it's uncomfortable because I've been there. Points are down, paychecks down, husband's over there, firm his brow at you, like, I need you to contribute more. Like where we where you where some of you are, it's uncomfortable. Beliefs hurt a little bit. Am I gonna move forward? Is this gonna be worth it? Here's the thing. Here's what you can take to the bank. People are moving forward. People are ranking up. Paychecks as a whole are bigger now than they were last year. Ask some successful people to see their 1099s. They're growing. They're growing. If that is true, then so can it be true for you. There's nothing special, nothing set apart. They're not doing, what's up, that? They're not doing anything different they're not keeping a secret from you they're just showing up a different way than you perhaps it's time in the game perhaps it's consistency perhaps it's attitude perhaps it's attitude um so before i give you the strategy i need you to know that this strategy is only going to work if you have complete clarity about where you're going if you're over here unsure, like if you're, if you're one of those, it's like, well, maybe Emerald, like may, Emerald be nice. Like I wish, I wish, I wish I could be Emerald. There is a distinct difference. And I wish I could be Emerald and I will become an Emerald. There's a distinct difference. Your brain is going to operate differently based off of which of those two thoughts you're believing. And some of you will tell me it's the same thought. And I'm telling you right now, it is not. 
when you say something like I wish to do, I wish for this, it's optional. It's kind of like, it'd be good if it happened. It's also fine if it doesn't. It's the biggest freaking cop out I've ever heard in my entire life, <laughs> ever, ever. You can't expect an A player to ever follow you anywhere if that is what you're believing about yourself and your own abilities. If you want to attract a B player that you can turn into an A player or a C player that you can turn into a B player, you have got to be rock solid that everything is figure outable. I literally have it on a wooden block, y'all. This is my motto, I swear. Everything is figure outable. Everything. And if you will believe this, and you can believe this because someone else somewhere is figuring it out. Someone else is figuring it out. So you got to know where you're headed. Otherwise, what I'm going to tell you to do is going to be much too uncomfortable for you. Okay. But if you know where you're going, if you're going to Disney World, then you're going to be willing to endure the six hours in the car with four bickering kids. You're going to be willing to undo the 19 potty breaks. You're going to be willing to endure, even if it's uncomfortable. But if you're not sure where you're going, I'm certainly not going to ride in the car with all of these humans for six hours. With nowhere in mind, maybe we'll get there. Maybe we won't. No, thanks. I ain't doing it. So um, here's the strategy. It's time that you guys create momentum. Some people say, well, when momentum happens, then I'll feel all of these things. And the truth of the matter is, making sure I'm not going over on time. Truth of the matter is energy, momentum is energy first. Momentum is energy first. Momentum is birthed out of energy and activity. The very last thing that you see in momentum is results. It's the very last thing you see. And here's why some people won't make momentum happen because they'll do what I'm going to tell you to do for 30 days. They'll do it and they will stick the course. They'll have the accountability chats. They'll be, and then day 36 will come and it will get just as easy to not do it as it would be to do it. But guys, I'm telling you the fruit of what I'm going to tell you to do, you're going to see it budding in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And this is a strategy that anytime you're feeling stuck in your business, if you will employ it, you will create momentum in six months or less, guaranteed. The more people that you have on your team who are employing this strategy, the quicker the momentum comes. Bet, watch, you will see another huge wave of momentum. God almighty, that will stop texting me. You will see another huge wave of momentum on our team in the next six months because of this strategy. We just started it in January, so y'all aren't behind. People will can like, keep it between us. It'll be such a fun secret. Just kidding. All right. So the strategy is this, and some of you may already know because you follow Brittany and I, but um, here's what we're having our, our team do. How many of you want to go to Mexico, Mayakoba? Okay. Listen, it was my favorite trip of all time. Oh, maybe not Portugal. I love Portugal. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Mayakoba was sexy. That was a sexy trip to be on if you're with your husband. If you weren't with your husband, then that probably wouldn't be sexy, but it was a sexy trip. I loved Mayakoba. I've never seen anything like it. The service, the, I have never seen anything like it ever. And I want you to know there is more than enough time for you to get to Mayakoba. I don't care where your points are. I do not care where your points are. At this point, there is plenty of time between February 17th and July, July 31st for you to be there. But you're going to have to believe it. And listen, you're going to have to say so crystal focused on what I'm about to tell you to do, which means you're going to have to ignore the next shiny thing. Somebody's going to drop a really good podcast and you're going to want to go listen to it, except it's not in alignment with what we're doing. Somebody's going to say, oh my gosh, you need to go read another book, except nope, not in line with what we're doing. Sometimes we'll go to what feels more comfortable. I'll do more learning right now because then I can avoid the discomfort of the business reach out the lunch date, the coffee meeting. I'll just go over here and do what feels a little more comfortable. I'm telling you, if you'll buckle down for the next six months and be massively uncomfortable and embrace the discomfort, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable for me. I'm doing it too. But I'm telling you, it will work. It will work. Okay, so here's a strategy. Make a list of 50 people that you want to be in Hawaii with every year. 50 people. We made our team make a list of 50 new people. These had to be people they had never talked to about Plexus before. I'll let you guys decide what fits your cup of tea. Um, 50 people. And this isn't 
just jotting down, this is you really taking the time and saying, okay, who would I love to be on the beaches with? I'm thinking of when I made my list, I'm thinking about what their spouses are like, what are their kids like? Like, and if I don't know them, I'm going to their Facebook and I'm looking, I'm doing some research, I'm analyzing because these are people, these are humans. And when it comes time for me to engage with them, they need to know I've been invested. I've been thinking about you for this particular reason and for this amount of time. And so 50 people, okay? Then for the next two weeks, now let me caveat, this is in addition to your regular IPA. Remember when I said this is about to be uncomfortable for some of you, some of you are over here saying, well, I'm not willing to work more than one hour a day on my business. That's fine. You're probably not going to get to six figures this year. Period. This is in addition to your IPA. So we don't get to do one or the other. This is both and. Um, okay, so regular IPA, list of 50. I, I have, <laughs> my list is called My Amigos. Get it, Mexico? My Amigos, oh, that's ridiculous. But I have a list of Amigos, 50 of them. It's actually 56 because I'm an overachiever. Um, for the next seven to 10 days, here's what you're doing. Every day, you're gonna pick five to eight of them and go engage in some way in their stories, on their wall, engage in some way. If you put somebody on your list that hadn't posted on social media in six months, take them off and put someone else on. I'm not even kidding. Not kidding. They don't get to be one of your people. Go and engage every day for the next seven to 10 days. That should get you multiple um, interactions with everybody on your list of 50 you'll be shocked with what the algorithm does to your feed when you go do this. For so long, I saw nothing but Plexus, jewels, nothing. Now that I have made it a point to comment on all my Amigo stuff so many times, I'm seeing all kinds of people's posts for the first time in a long time. For the first time in a long time, which means that they're seeing my stuff for the first time. I love you too. No, I can't unscrew this right now. Um, So, you're going to go and engage for the next seven to 10 days on their stuff. And listen, try to comment in a way that's different than how other people are going to comment. So if somebody's got on a smoking hot dress, don't say smoking hot. Everyone's going to say that. Say something else like, oh my gosh, that really accentuates your shoulder blades. Whatever. I don't know. Think of something that would be different. Set apart. If you can ask a question that they respond to in the comments, that's going to bolster the algorithm as well. Okay. All right. Everybody tracking any questions yet? Okay, good. Oh, I do have a question. Okay. You said if they haven't posted or shared stories and how long take them off the list? If they hadn't shared a story, I mean, since before Christmas, they got to go. Because that means they're not going to see my engagement anyway. What do you want me to do with this? Okay. Um, okay, so then you're going to engage on their stuff. Then, this is where some of y'all trying to leave the call. Then you're only allowed to reach out to them about the opportunity. You got to get the smaller ones, triple A. Um, so when it's time to reach out, you have to reach out about the opportunity. You have to. Listen, I got a girl that's over here like, I did it, but I think I have to puke. I'm like, call me after you puke. I don't care how you feel about it. You just have to do it. Because if you do it enough, the feeling, here's the thing. Think about how you do want to feel. When I reach out about the opportunity, this is how I want to feel. I want to feel like Christina feels. Tell yourself that if you want to. I want to feel like Christina feels. And then ask yourself this. What must Christina think when she sits down to do this? If you want to feel like I feel, start thinking what I'm thinking. Right? Okay, so where's the other part? Okay. Then you have to reach out. So by the end of this 30-day period, now we're in the middle of February, so yours, yours will go to the middle of March. Um, by the end of this period, you will have had to reach out to all 50. So listen, if you ain't willing to reach out to that one particular girl from your sorority, don't put her on the list. Because here's what the accountability is going to look like. Your three leaders are going to be saying, how's it going with your list of 50? How many have you reached out to? If you're not willing to reach out, don't put them on the list. Um, by the end of the 30 days, you are going to reach out about the opportunity. And I have a million sample messages that I would be glad to throw y'all's way, but y'all have great leaders who are top-notch recruiters. You don't need my sample messages. You just need to be yourself. 
Here's a real simple skeleton. Hey, this is what I'm excited about that we've got going on. The reason I thought of you was blank. I'm curious if maybe you guys have been praying for some extra income. I know right now that's really heavy on people's heart. And I'm just curious, maybe you've been praying for it because I felt a nudge to reach out. Nobody's going to say, oh my gosh, you're disgusting. I hate you. Blech. No, listen, they know what you do for a living. If you post about the business, they didn't want you to reach out. They should have unfriended you. I swear, that's exactly how I think. I'm like, I post about the opportunity. If they don't want to hear from me, they ought to have unfriended me. And listen, they better be real careful and go ahead and block me too, because I ain't above reaching out to somebody that I ain't friends with. Okay. I just, I mean, I feel that strongly about it. You got people complaining left and right about how much an egg costs. And I'm over here like, eggs went up? Hmm. No idea. I got solutions for people. I got solutions for people. Okay, you have to reach out about the opportunity. Here's really where some of y'all about to leave the call. When they're open, this is when the rubber meets the road. This is where you're wishing and willing meet. I wish this would happen. Let's see what you're willing to do. When they're open, here's what you say. Awesome, Jordan. I'm so glad that you are open to hearing a little bit more. Listen, when do you have a couple minutes that we can jump on the phone? I'd love to tell you my story because if you're like me, I definitely never, ever thought this is what I would end up doing, but I'm so pumped about it. When can we connect? Did you turn it on? You have to, sometimes you have to put it on the on button. I'll help you in a second, okay? Um, when they say yes, you have to get them on the phone. You have to get them on the phone. Now, you guys, really, this timing couldn't be better for this call because I'm doing a training on Monday for my team about what to do with somebody from the I'm open point. We noticed a giant gap in our team this month. When people are open, they're like, oh, what do I do? And they either play small or puke. I mean, just all kinds of just plexus all over them. So there's a training coming on Monday. None of you will need it before then about what the heck to do when you get them on the phone. I'm going to tell you word for word what to do when you get them on the phone. But you're going to have to be willing to, guys. Listen, out of the list of 50, you're probably going to end up with eight to 15 who are open. That's kind of the metrics that we're getting. Eight to 15 that are open. Out of those eight to 15 that are open, you're probably going to end up having to do six to 10 phone calls. You will not die. You will not die. You also won't be great at first. That's okay. I wish y'all could see some of the junk Jordan and I used to put out years ago. It's a wonder anybody followed us anywhere. It's a wonder. I made a video one time in a nursing tank top in the pitch black dark. A training video for my team in the team page. It's okay. It's okay to be bad at it. So you're going to engage with 50 people. You're going to reach out to them about the opportunity. You're going to harness your inner, how does Christina feel? What does she think to feel that way? What do I need to think to feel that way? Guys, you all have so much more success than you even realize. I don't care if your confidence about helping somebody get to diamond is there or not. Do you feel confident that you can tell somebody how you went Ruby? Yes. If you can help somebody go Ruby, guess what? You can go Emerald. We just got to keep it simple. Engage, engage, reach out about the business, get on the phone, stop taking the easy way out and saying, well, I tried to handle her objections in messenger. It ain't going to work. People are not going to be honest about their true fears in Messenger. And even if they are, they're certainly not going to feel connected to you in text. It's just not going to work. This is where the wishing meets the willing. Okay. Then hold on to it. That list goes with you now. And then at the end of 30 days, you continue this because we still know most people are going to take eight to 12 exposures, even with the opportunity. The middle of March, you do it again. You do it again. You write another list of 50. Oh my gosh, Christina, I'm going to write out of people. I don't believe it. I'm seven years in. No, you're not. You should be expanding your network every single day. If not, start now. And by the end of this month, you will have 50 new friends. Okay. And if you will do this process for the next six months, continuing to not drop the ball on each list as you move into the next month, I mean, get a notebook for crying out loud. I don't really care. I have mine in a remarkable. Um, <laughs> 
I mean, some people on our team, they have them in a spreadsheet. And so they're like doing, you know, initial reach out, follow up, follow up, business testimony. They're finally open, telephone call. Like that's how they're notating where they are in the process. So get creative. Yes, 50 new every month. Yes. And we've done this before in our business. Brittany and I did it back before we were Jules. Um, so it's a proven process. It is a proven process. It is one that um, it requires discomfort. And it's way more fun to be uncomfortable with this many people. When Brittany and I did it, it was just a couple of us. And it was real easy to talk each other out of it. We've got our girls in a chat like this. And that it, it, it's everyone's soul. Like, guys, this is the key driver. This is what must change if you want your business to change. You know what takes care of retention? Duplication. Duplication. Get people working and they're not going to turn off their order. I know I'm way over on time. I feel like I have to talk to you guys forever. Um, okay, that's the strategy. That's the strategy. Brittany has two, um, I think she calls the Mexico strategy calls on her YouTube. If you need further clarification, I wouldn't waste my time going there though. Honestly, if I were you, um, if you, if you need to know what to listen to, to get your mind right, listen to her podcast every week, print the workbook out and then go to work, go to work. What's the worst thing that will happen if you just humor me for six months and do what I'm telling you to do? Like let's bet money on it. Let's bet money that nothing will change in your business. If you're working on adding value on your social media, you gotta be adding value. Surely y'all are by now. Um, if you're not adding value, start because your reach outs are only going to be as effective as your influence. You can grow an influence, but start working, start working. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. You just might have to talk to a lot of the wrongs to find the rights. Okay. Questions. I have a question. Um, with, so you write your new list every month and do any of the people that were on a previous list ever go on another list? Like if they didn't respond or anything like that? Well, your first list, it's a, it's a moving list. So it comes with you. You don't ever get to be done. Like I won't ever be done with my February Amigo list. Like I'll, I'm keeping track of who's where on there. The only time I'm telling you I ever take anybody off is if they're just like a world-class uh, I ain't dealing with it. Like I'll just unfriend them and save myself the trouble. But otherwise they stay on my list, whether they respond or don't respond. I just am very um, persistent without being pushy. So it's a moving list. Um, the only, like when I, when you first start this one list, a lot of the times there will be people that are um, like dream teamers that you've never really had the boldness to go business with. Maybe you've gone product with and maybe they've tried or maybe they haven't, but you've never really gone business. If you've never talked biz with somebody, I think they qualify for the first list. I really do. I mean, if you have somebody that you've been building a relationship with that church and she knows you do plexus and y'all are friends, but you've never talked business, she can go on the list. If you're going to be willing to have the conversation with her in the first 30 days, if you're not going to be willing to, she can't go on the list. Do I have awesome. any current product takers on the list? Uh, well, I talked to the, I talked to every single product user about the business. So I wouldn't have had anybody that qualified, but if you have shied away from talking about the business with every product user, then yeah, they can go on the list. Also stop that. How do I fill my funnel seven years in? Uh, well, I'm always, always, always adding people. Matter of fact, if somebody is um, a, a hard no, and I know that I know that I'm not going back out to reach back out to them, I'll go to their friends list and I will find people that we have mutual friends with. I can add 38 people from one person's friend list. Not even kidding. Um, that I'm in, I'm in several different um, personal development, leadership, Facebook groups. I'm adding value in there and I'm looking at who's got smart things to say in other people's comments, adding them as friends. Um, I mean, the fact of the matter is I have 5,000 Facebook friends. There's no way. I, and listen, I'm a high recruiter all the time and there's still people that I will pull up on my friends list that I've never talked to before ever or that I haven't reached out to since 2017. So um, you would be surprised if you would sort your Facebook friends. You can sort Facebook friends oldest to newest. <clears throat> and I just kind of start there. You can also make custom friends lists on Facebook. You guys know how to do that? So if I go to my Facebook, um, you, I can go to friends and there's a spot only on your computer. You can't do it on your phone, but on your computer, uh-oh, buddy. 
on your computer, you can make a custom list. So my list on Facebook for those friends literally says my amigos. And if you click on that friends list, it's only those 50. So I can pull them up, click on each one, go engage in their posts, go engage in their stories. Um, super simple. I have a screen record of how to do it. I'll send it to you guys. So you can do that on your Facebook if that's how you prefer to grow. Um, it definitely helps with distractions. Yep. Quick Absolutely. question. We have uh, several girls that are looking to rank up next month because they Ooh, need, well, they need the re-rank, right? They need yep. to re-rank next Five month times. to finish out, right? So what, would, what what advice would you give to them as far as creating energy next month? Because it all is going to start with the energy that they create. Yeah. My, my advice now would be speed up this process quickly this month. Listen, I know some things that are coming in March. You couldn't have a better setup for March from the company. Okay. But the work happens now. So I would be speeding that process up. So I would be engaging with all 50 this week and I would start my reach outs next week. I mean, listen, we have people that come in and go silver in 24 hours. This whole idea that you need a lot of time is baloney. Back in the day before people had welcome pack bonuses or, or um, points for welcome. Pack. I mean, we had people going fast start gold in 30 days and they didn't even get real points. We had to deal with mock points. Like it's time to create some urgency. When you get somebody who's ready to get going, empower them to go start right then. Hey, listen, what's your plan right now? How can I help you be successful? Great. You want to reach out to three people? Girl, I think we can do six. Who can we talk to? Like you just start creating that urgency yourself. Um, and then I'd be going back and looking at people who I had once followed up with about the opportunity that I had dropped the ball on. There's so many, I, I have done research. There are so many people who stop offering the opportunity at follow-up number four. Those are people that are halfway there. Why are we stopping? It's like taking the pickle jar and like barely loosening it. So the next person that comes along just has to go. <laughs> like if you're not going to see the whole pickle jar all the way through, just save your first re four reach outs. You're wasting your time. So instead, go back to those people, the pickle jars, where you've loosened the lid and continue to follow up, even if you have to eat a little bit of crow and say, oh my gosh, Emily, I, I am mortified that I have let so much time go by. Like I've been so busy over here crushing it with these girls who really are, you know, changing lives and stuff. But I just got a nudge to reach back out to you because I told you two years ago that you would be amazing over here. And I'm even more confident now based on what I've learned and the experience I've had. Like, I'm curious if maybe now's a better time for you to take a look. So it's just going to look like having a lot of a lot of business reach outs and every single product user that you have that joins your team, you should be saying something like, hey, listen, when you love this, are you going to be telling people and they're going to say, yeah, when I have when I like it, I will be. You can be like, great. Listen, what I'm hearing you say is you need belief. I can help you build some belief right now. Let me tell you what's on the table. If you went ahead and started sharing, I have a whole training video on that. We call it the magic question. We got to We got to stop letting people sit on products for 30, 60, 90 days. We got to stop. We got to share the opportunity immediately, but you got to be excited about it. You're asking people to take a risk. When you're asking people to do this, it feels risky to them. They need to know that you're rock solid. You're like the um, tandem sky. What's it called when you jump out of an airplane? Skydiver. You're the tandem guy. You're like the guy in charge. You got to be ready to like somersault out the airplane with somebody attached to you. If you're like nervous and holding on to the edges and you're trying to make me jump out of an airplane, I'm not going to feel great about it. But if you're like, let's go, then I'm like, okay, we're going. She seems like she knows we're going to be alive once it's over. That's how you got to be. You got to be the tandem skydive instructor who's like, let's go. They have to know that they can trust you. Like, hey, listen, we'll figure it out together. You're, uh, let's go. Let's make this happen. Did I just scare y'all's teams to death? I'm never going to be invited back. No, everyone's writing their list right now. Okay. That's what's happening. Please invite me back. Okay. So if you, here's what I, I, anybody that is probably senior gold and above, I would have this strategy for. So for you, Rubies and senior Rubies, when, if you're bought into this and you're energized and you're jazzed and you go get somebody else's buy-in, it will be very effective. If you have a goal, um, you might want to just take it down to 30, a list of 30. Make, you're going to have to meet people where they are. But if you're telling me, I would like to be in Hawaii by July, this is what it's going to take for you to get there. This is what it's going to take. And if you choose to not do this, just know when we're gone in July, you're going to have to own that. You're going to have to say, listen, and it's okay. 
If you're not willing to do what's required right now, that's fine. But when July comes, just remember that was, it was a lack of willingness, not a lack of ability. Because anybody who wants to go to uh, Mexico can go. You're going to see people who haven't even joined yet who are in the trip. So there's no, no reason that you ladies, where you are in your business cannot be there. No reason whatsoever. You're just going to have to choose what you want. What do you want more? Comfort now or Mayakoba? Because you can't have both. You can't have both. You're going to have to be, yep. No, go ahead. I was going to say, you're going to have to be okay with being uncomfortable for the next five and a half months, no matter what. And it's going to mean saying no to really good things. For instance, my leaders, we, we're doing nothing but group coaching. Listen, somebody has a question one-on-one, -on -one, they need to put it in the group coaching chat. Like your focus is on create business builders personally, period. You will solve so much of your team's problems if you're going and creating business builders for yourself. People ain't got mindset stuff when they're getting results. Their mindset's much smaller. Their, their mindset problem's much smaller when they're getting results. The best thing you can do is go become successful at creating this key driver of a business builder and your team's problems will start to take care of itself. You said to do this in addition with your daily IPAs. So our IPAs are, we're training ourselves, we're sharing on social, we're reaching out, we're following up, we're doing customer care. So this actually like hits upon a lot of those things what are you doing in addition to this to continue yeah. the IPAs? Yeah. So this is, you know, most people's reach outs are product focused. So whatever y'all's, uh, for us, our reach outs are, we do a, a weekly accountability whams. So people are required to do 10 new 25 follow-ups. Those are normally, most people are going to be product focused. So this list of 50 is in addition to whatever they're doing. You can't, listen, you can't stop recruiting. You got to keep recruiting. It's going, if you, if you were to pivot to only business reach outs, it's going to slow your joins down temporarily. Some people are willing to pay that price. Um, you're not going to want to pay that price in March. Let me just tell y'all. Uh, so it's going to have to be both and. So you're going to have to recruit obviously for product, but the, the, the name of the game is recruit and convert. Recruit and convert. Wouldn't that be cool if it was both? What if we, what if we could recruit our ever so ever many numbers and then turn them into business builders? So, um, I have taken away. Um, so my, the way we're growing ourselves is Brit's podcast every week, book club every week, team call every week. And then we have our group coachings. Other than that, I tell people they need to pour into the, the word of God and let them off the hook with their other stacks of books, the 19 books that they're trying to read for 30 minutes a day to check a box. They can't retain a ding dong thing that they've learned. Stop it. Leave the box, leave the box of books there for now. And let's focus here. If you, I mean, even if they just, if they listen to a book study, Brittany's podcast that has the little free thing or whoever, whoever y'all want to listen to. Y'all don't have to listen to Brittany. I think she's great. Um, and then apply what they're learning on team call and come to group coaching prepared with some problems. That's way more effective than spending three hours a week reading a book when at the end of the week, I'm like, what was you, what'd you read this week? It was good. So they'll say it was good. I'm like, you have no idea what you read. So that 30 minutes, like do your quiet time, do your Bible study and then pour into it's time to get results focused. It's time to get activity focused. There are times and it's time to really dig into mindset and stuff like that. Listen, at this point, I don't really care how people feel about it. I care about getting them results. They come to us because they want to make money. They want to be successful. They want to be in Mexico. This is what it's going to take. And if I can get them there, they're going to show up in Mexico with way less mind trash than they currently have. So I feel great about it. Well, this was excellent. And I think that this was really good giving like tangible things for our teams to go and do. And I think, I mean, Marissa said in here multiple times, like, I feel like you're in my brain. Like this is exactly what I needed to hear. And so we are so grateful for you taking this time and just sharing with us. And yeah, I, I watched the Mexico part two, just half of it whenever I reached out to you. And so I was super pumped for you to come and share this. Um, we're actually doing this on our team. Um, to front load March. So we're going to start this next week. So really, really excited about it. Thank you, Christina. Does anybody else have anything they want to say before we jump off? I know this is longer than, than normal, but so, so sorry. No, we're so grateful you'd be willing to spend this time. Uh, Jordan, Joanna, anything else you guys want to say? The only thing I'm going to say is yesterday Chandler and I were talking and she was like, Listen, when my business is fun and I'm moving my feet, I have a lot less head trash and I'm just work. Like it's just, it just things just start moving. And she was like, so I, everything you just said was, yes, we need to do the thought work, but like the strategy and the movement and the going and the focus, like 
that is a big piece of the puzzle. We can't forget about that. And so I'm so glad that you brought all of that. Yeah. yeah. And then the last thing I'll tell you leaders is people aren't going to do what they're not held accountable to. So keep the, the work is keep the focus, keep the focus, keep the focus. And so it's, it's questions like how many of the 50 have you reached out to? What are you hearing? Are you confident of the next steps? That's where we're really finding some gaps. Like, well, the next step I think is this. And it's like, interesting. My next step would be this. So let's, let's see like what, why, why, aren't, why don't they, we got to figure out what we know that they don't know. So that's just the leadership piece. And for any of you, they're going to trickle this down. People aren't going to do what they're not held accountable to. So cool. Well, I'm so sorry that I took 21 extra minutes, but I oh, love you guys. It's perfect. Fun. Thank you so much, Christina. Thank you guys for being on. I will get this uploaded to YouTube so you guys can share it with your teams and go back and rewatch it. Christina, you're the best. Thank you guys so very much, y'all. Bye. Sure. Yeah.